I think it's really important that we're bringing Kevin back to his alma mater. And <laughs> also, more importantly, um, he does this. He does this every day. We, we're, I just talk about it. He's the one that's actually out there engaging with our audience, with our, uh, with our teams and whatnot. So um, he's going to have a lot more insights than I have. But um, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a brief overview about AJ+. Um, how many of you guys have interacted with one of our pieces of content? That's pretty good. Nice. OK, so I'm going to just start off with a short video just to give you a taste of AJ+. Empower. Engage. Defy. Defy. My favorite word is engage. At AJ+, Plus, we don't just inform and tell you the news. We want to hear from you. What we do does defy what a standard news organization usually does. Everyone's got a reaction to ISIS. Brazil's become a major hotspot for surgical holidays. Have you ever heard of WikiLeaks? Ricky Lake. What's so great about AJ Plus? It's new, it's fresh, it's the next generation of news. What's exciting about the news today is being able to bring other voices into the conversation. I know my rights, you got a gun pointed at me. I have not committed a crime. Hearing back from people I think is important. We tell stories in a unique way. We want to hear about the stories that matter to you. Great. So, oh, no, that's, no, actually, is the right presentation, sorry. I, I saw the wrong hashtag in the bottom. Um, great. So, just so what is AJ Plus? So, AJ Plus is a new digital channel from Al Jazeera. We're actually part of the innovation group at Al Jazeera, and it's really creating content for a new audience. We really look at this mobile first generation and say, okay, we want to create contextual news that's going to empower them and lead them really to a conversation space. So, what's really interesting for us, and this is why we why we built AJ Plus is we want to actually start off building a news organization that had engagement at its core. That actually thought about engagement from the moment of pitch all the way through the whole experience. And really thinking about it as an experience. And so engagement for us is a core part of that. And that we'll even talk about uh, a little bit later on about how we're actually trying to build that into what we do all the time. But first off, I just wanted to show you, um, I think, I, mean, I love to be challenged on this, but I think we do have one of the most diverse newsrooms in America. Uh, this is our staff. We have about 80 people in San Francisco with all great, all sorts of great backgrounds. I think we speak about 30, 40 languages on staff. And we really are building a staff that's actually reflective of the community that we're trying to engage with as well. And I think that's critical to building uh, AJ+. But here's just a brief overview of just kind of our structure, right? So you know, we're in this moment of, of having one editorial team. And our editorial creates content that's across, you know, we have various different strands. We have a real-time one that's actually really reactive to what's happening in the news today. We have a team that's focused on context, actually contextualizing the news. We produce our own documentaries. And we actually just started a satire unit as well. Then we also think about inside editorial distribution. We actually distribute our, 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 across our app and across our various social sites. We have an audience development team that's actually thinking about strategies and thinking about what's going out there and trying to implement them back into the workflow, into, into the structure. Data, we have a data team, which is a nice, a nice part of, of building a team from the beginning. And then we also have our own technology teams, too, building our own CMSs, building our mobile apps, and whatnot. And so one thing that's interesting about AJ Plus is we actually don't have a TV outlet. We don't have a print product. We don't even have a website. Our website is a landing page that actually says, these are all the different places we're at. And we're actually in the social spaces that we think our audiences are. And we understand they're totally different in those spaces. You know, the Instagram audience is not the same as the Facebook audience. It's not the same as the Twitter audience. But those are all our audiences. And we treat each of those places as an authentic platform. We really think about who is that community on Twitter, who is that community on Medium, who is that community on the mobile app, and create a content and engagement modules for those spaces. So to talk a little bit more about some of the videos, and really you know, the, the title of our talk is about using video as the building block for engagement, Kevin's going to talk about some of the videos that we've been producing. Sweet. So as Jigar said, I'm one of the engagement producer, and I basically work with all the video producers to kind of talk from the beginning to the output um, on how we're going to package that video and how we're going to offer it to our audience. So I want to start right away with one of the videos. Um, and tell you a little bit of how we built uh, the engagement block around it. Hi, bud. Talk to you real quick. Come here. Come here. Madison, please. Yeah. 
now walk around close to the garage. What does he look like? He's a skinny black guy. He's got a toboggan on. Uh, he's really skinny. Okay. I come from very poor family and I work so hard here. I'm totally devastated. apologize to Mr. Vitell, Mr. Vitell's family, and our community. So I'm sure most of you saw the video when the news broke that Mr. Patel was taken down and left paralyzed. Uh, probably heard also the dispatch, the police officer's audio. So the challenge for us was to say, OK, the raw video is out there, the audio is out there, strong elements. It's not necessary to just show what is already out there. So how can we package it? We decided to put basically two lines to, introdu to introduce the, the video and then put the audio on top of the, the raw video and just let it play because it was strong enough uh, for us to let it play and have kind of you know, strong edits and uh, music and creating a nice uh, pace to basically build the narrative arc and be able to um, you know, have our social media conversation added to it. So that video was viewed four million times, uh, was shared 65,000 times, uh, did extremely well on Facebook, uh, really, really quality conversation, really good quality conversation uh, on our platforms. And for, I mean, when we put this out, we saw the reaction, and then we follow up with, you know, over videos and the arrest of uh, one of the, pro the the police officer, and the audience came back to us. So it was very interesting to see how this happened with one video and one one conversation between video producers, uh, obviously EPs, and the engagement team. So I think what's also important to note is we actually watched it um, in the environment that our audience does not watch at all. This is the gr giant screen, audio on. But if you, you know, let me let, you know, watch it again, and you can imagine that this is someone actually, it's, this, this, this video is designed for Facebook. We take, you know, everything is subtitled. We think about you know, the, 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 re, the, the, the environment that someone's actually watching it in with sound off on a small screen. And then the, the interesting thing is it's built for engagement because the conversation is happening on that video on Facebook. And so we're not trying to drive people to another place. We're saying, this is where people are having the conversation. Let's have it there. And because of the, the, the viral nature and the network effect on Facebook, it got shared incredibly well. This is a video that didn't come out, you know, it came out two days after the, the initial incident, maybe a day after the video had come out. So we took our time to actually see what the conversation was around it. So we want to move on to the next video. And I'm going to play the video as Kevin talks about it. So this video is from the State of the Union. Um, the weeks leading to the State of the Union, we kind of covered our bases by producing some, you know, context contextual uh, videos saying, you know, what the millennials should care about, why they should vote, and kind of, you know, the the, the normal conversation that you would expect. Uh, the Get day, on. the day of the State of the Union, the speech was on Medium. Uh, everyone had heard about it. Everyone had talked about it. So the morning after, when we all arrived. We had seen these memes online, and the conversation led by the millennials was around those memes. So we decided to basically build our, <laughs> our, post, uh, our post speech video around those memes to kind of say, hey guys, let's, uh, let's have a laugh all together, and then be able to reconcentrate. And you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, And so basically, with that question, say, OK, we, we, we share a laugh together, but let's maybe bring it back to the, the important conversation. And we were able to repush some of our content that had more contextual uh, elements. 
So that was our way also to show that we can build engagement and quality engagement around uh, a light piece. So for us, especially in video too, just like really simple, like asking a question at the end of the video drives people to go and comment, whether it's on Twitter or on Facebook or even on YouTube. It gives people the constraints to what the conversation, which way we want to lead the conversation. So that third video was an experiment for us at the beginning. Um, it's raw footage we got from our <coughs> VJ, video journalist from Mexico City. Uh, we got a lot of, a lot of uh, raw footage, and we were like, what are we going to do with this? And we decided to cut it. I think it's three and a half minutes, and just put it out there and see what was the reaction. It's very strong footage. You see a lot of uh, protesters. Then there's violence with uh, uh, some police. and. It's very strong, and it, we just put it out there to see what was the reaction. Uh, it got shared thousands of times. We had 300,000 views. Uh, it did very well on Facebook and on, uh, on YouTube. Um, and from this, we decided to create a template that will be direct from, and that will be raw footage. And we have been doing that now for the past, I don't know, five, four months or something like that. So the great thing about this is you know, we have a whole backlog of also contextual content we've created. Just you know, what is happening in Mexico, uh, more you know, animated explainers, a, a whole host of different uh, types of content. These become almost like top of the funnel. It allows us to actually drive people back into those other experiences kind of you know, in a piecemeal way. And when we get into the app, you can see how actually we start connecting these various video elements together. And Ferguson, we we went hard on Ferguson. We had uh, two teams uh, on the ground uh, twice. Um, and this video is very interesting in the sense that we had a team in San Francisco and we had the team on the ground. And they sent us footage as this was happening. So we were able to cover breaking news from a national story, I mean, where a national uh, story was happening. Um, and we released that I instantly and got, the, got at the heart of the discussion online and so kind of exclusive footage because the reporters, the, the people on the ground were with uh, people who were part of the protesters and who were basically witnessing uh, what was happening on the ground. And we do put a little bit of uh, context by seeing where we are, uh, when it is, and who those people are, but we just let it play again with subtitles, which is great for uh, our, mobile, um, our mobile platform. And then it's very strong visuals and uh, and thoughts, basically. So the other thing interesting about our Ferguson uh, uh, experiment with, with what we were doing, we deployed a couple of times. And we actually said the constraints of, we want our reporters who are out there actually using the same device that our audience is consuming our content on, right? So they weren't, this has all been shot with, a, with an iPhone. They were using Slack to transfer files back. They were having a conversation in real time on Twitter, both through their accounts and our main account. So it really it allowed us to actually have a little bit more authenticity with our, with our audience, saying we're actually using the same devices that you're consuming this on to actually create this content as well. And it was good for us as an experiment to see what the, the pain points around that are. And we're going to be doing a lot more of that this year. You know, I think it's important to, you know, to think about that this is all being created by an engagement team. And the engagement team is not, uh, I think we've heard this a few times, they're not, they're not the people who do it. They're the people who, are, who lead it. They're, they're the river guides, essentially, within our organization. You know, we have a, a deep desire to actually have uh, everyone in the organization participate in engagement. But it does take people uh, on a team to help push that through. And we're just trying to think better ways to do that workflow-wise. So they, uh, yes, everyone is tweeting. Everyone is engaging. But it's not going to be the onus on the video producer to, to do that. But we want to, to lead them into that space. And that's why we have a team of about um, 12 in San Francisco that are on the engagement, who are engagement producers like Kevin, who are actually working on this every day. And obviously, mobile first. I mean, that's a really big part of what we're doing, right? And part of that is creating our own mobile app. And I want to quickly um, just show you a brief video to give you a little taste of the mobile app. What does a broadcast news organization look and feel like when it's no longer trying to just be broadcast? We've reimagined the concept of the news story by breaking all of the conventions. 
We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube, we have an app. What you really want to do is take advantage of the mobile device. The app is basically a glimpse into all the conversations that are going on. When they're organized by themes, those themes are what we call stacks. Sometimes they're video cards that are capturing the breaking news, sometimes it's the human element, sometimes it's the context, so that as we add new elements, new cards, new videos, etc., we can alert you. The mission of AJ Plus is to give our younger audience a snapshot of what's going on in the world. We are bringing the audience into the fold. We're first trying to figure out what it is that people are interested in, what they're talking about. It's not about trying to read 2,000 words in one sitting, but keeping in touch with that issue over time. We have stories from all over the world. We have a core group of people who are here in San Francisco. We come in every morning and we've scoured the news and we've tried to figure out sort of what stories have risen to the top, what stories are important for the day. We try and create a package and that develops over time. The future of news is no longer TV, it's online, it's in the social space, it's AJ+. So I think it's interesting is again, it, you know, creating content for this device and you know, we're starting off with the concept of cards and stacks, you know, the, that, that stories are stacks that kind of uh, evolve over time by adding new elements and those elements we call cards. So I just want to give you a brief taste of the different cards that we have. In, uh, in our ecosystem. And the idea is, again, each card is shareable on its own. It's, it has uh, uh, enough context to stay on its own, but it actually is part of a larger narrative. Um, so we have everything from the video cards that we saw. We have art cards. We do a lot of infographics as well um, that are designed by our team. So we have a team of in-house designers that create these. Um, we have the video elements. We also have quizzes, which is interesting for us. You know, Again, this concept of having someone watch a video and then take a quiz or watch a, uh, take a quiz and then watch a video. And so we're really playing around with order, too, with, with the app. Um, debate cards. This is like one thing that has over a 90% engagement rate uh, whenever we inc include a debate card into, into a stack. So when people see this, you know, very e uh, easy engagement, yes or no. And then we also have conversation cards as well, which, which drive people again into that, into that debate. One challenge that we're dealing with is, you know, and this is why interesting with Facebook with unified commenting, you know, does it make sense to have the same conversation happening on Facebook happen inside the app? Or should we keep them as separate uh, communities? So I think uh, with uh, a little bit of our remaining time, I want Kevin to show you a, a live demo of the app. Because, um, and if you haven't downloaded the app, uh, I highly recommend that you do. It's, we just launched a brand new version for iOS. And I think for us, you know, as we think about it, the constellation of places that we're publishing in, uh, the app is something that we can actually have a, a lot more deeper one-to-one -one engagement with our audience. And it's a place that we're learning and experimenting with the most. OK, so now are we going a little live to? Okay. Yep. Yes, live to the app. Okay. Do, should I yeah, go, yeah. For okay. go for it? So when you open it, basically, you find the stacks that we just described. Um, I'm going to show you one that we worked um, on recently. It's the one on GMO. So we had the stack that is lead, led by a video um, that we look back at, you know, Monsanto and the discussion around it um, that was produced, you know, by our video producer, basically. So then you, you, you watch the video and we ask you a question, a debate question, and you answer yes or no. Someone give an answer? No? 70% of our audience says no. So you can also answer, you know, give your own opinion below and you know, participate, and you can basically answer over people as well. Um, and then you keep on your experience. You have a picture, and then you will be able to read a little bit about that specific story that we decided to cover uh, with that card. Um, you can go to a link that will give you a bit more on the story, and then you can comment as well if you want here. Then we have a quiz. I, I took the quiz last night. That's why I has a one out of four <laughs> on, Kevin. <laughs> I was on not, Kevin's. On, I was logged into Kevin's account. <laughs> I was not going to say it, but. Um, so you can take the quiz. Basically, you have 10 seconds to answer each question. Um, I don't know it by heart. So it's a no. And we can basically go on like that with four questions. And if you continue the experience with this specific stack, you will have an over video, for example, we could have had you know, an over art card or an infographic as we described it earlier. So what I think it's interesting is you know, now we're getting people, you know, the action we want people to, to, to have on, on the app is start following this story, following the GMO story. And for us, as that story evolves over time, we'll be inserting more uh, uh, cards into that, that stack 
and then actually updating the audience, pinging them, saying, hey, there's a new element that you might be interested in. And so for us, this is really an exciting place for us to start to really understand even the app ecosystem and notifications and updates. And I think there's a lot of things that we're all struggling with, we're really trying to understand with this, with this um, product. So I think with that, we've reached the end of our 20 minutes. I think we have. So uh, you guys are going to be around uh, through lunch and afternoon, yes? So Absolutely. if people have questions, uh, they'll be around. Just hit them up for your questions. Thank you very much, Digger and Kevin. Thank you.